So before I talk about the endocrine system in more detail, it probably makes sense that I'm gonna to talk to you about control systems. So the nervous and endocrine system. And I want to compare them a bit so that we can really know what the endocrine system does and why we have these two different control systems. So I'd like to start by reviewing a stimulus response pathway. Um, this is a formal learning check, but you should be writing diagrams down as, as I do things, right? So a stimulus response pathway, a simple one. And I'm saying this because you'll see more complex ones, um, mostly in the spring, but of course it gets more complicated. So we have mostly seen examples. I think most of the examples I've drawn are neural. So the nervous system, um, a stimulus response pathway in the nervous system. So knee-jerk reflex is initiated by the, the spinal cord is the integrating center for that. That is an, a nervous system um, response. That's not endocrine system. And that's preview, that's because it's, it's quick. So the generic pathways though are gonna be pretty similar. So there should be no surprise here what I'm about to draw. You should be like, oh my gosh, I'm already sick of her drawing this. These components, response. So that could be a tap on the patellar tendon, tendon causing a kick of the leg. Now, this is a stimulus response pathway. This is not a feedback loop. Talk about that in a moment. Endocrine. If we were going to have a stimulus response pathway, we also could. So the endocrine system um, can act as a integrator as well. However, the main difference is the receptor is often the same thing as the integrator. So the thing that detects integrator, the thing that detects um, whatever, is, whatever variable we're talking about is also the thing that makes a decision. So we'll see some examples of this. Pancreas is a good one. So the pancreas is able to detect blood sugar levels and then produce a hormone to respond to that either insulin or glucagon, depending on which direction blood sugar is, if it's too high or too low. So this, and actually I'll add to this in just a moment, I'm gonna label this endocrine organ, but we finish this first, the rest is gonna be the same, right? We still have to have an effect. For blood sugar, one of the effectors or targets is skeletal muscle. Um, when blood sugar is too high, it, the skeletal muscle is going to um, be using ATP more to and have like glucose be produced into ATP to lower glucose levels. We'll come back to that example, but liver and skeletal muscle are example of targets or effectors of the pancreas. The pancreas is still really important in that process, right? So for our neural feedback loop, nervous system, Let's say here, okay, I'm just gonna put central nervous system, right? This integrator is always in the central nervous system. The input signal from the receptor is pretty much always gonna be a sensory neuron. And this output signal is always gonna be, pretty much always gonna be a motor neuron. And we'll come back to those the nervous system in more detail, and actually the knee-jerk reflex in more detail in a little, not actually for a while, because now the point's endocrine. So endocrine, this here would be the endocrine organ. Um, the input signal actually might be direct. So endocrine, endocrine organs can just di directly detect variables that are out of whack. So blood sugar, so we'll see examples of that. Um, the output signal is gonna be, what do you think? A hormone, right? That's what endocrine organs produce. And that hormone is going to target 
often more than one thing in the body to respond to that um, thing. Okay, so these are both stimulus response pathways. Um, the knee-jerk reflex is not an example of a feedback loop. Glucose regulation is. What makes this a feedback loop is, so is it a regulated variable? And then if so, we have that, this case here, let's use blood sugar as our example. That's what we've been using. Blood sugar is a regulated variable. So this response is going to feed back to turn off the system. Once our body has responded to the high or low blood sugar, the effect of this pathway has dealt with that to maintain homeostasis. There are nervous system feedback loops as well, but um, if you wanna use this also to emphasize what makes it a feedback loop isn't necessarily these labels here, but the, the fact that it's a homeostatically maintained variable. So in the endocrine system, in the rest of this week, we will see pancreas and parathyroid as examples. And they're both going to be endocrine organs that have negative feedback components to control blood calcium and blood glucose are the two examples with those two organs. There are endocrine functions in the body that are not necessarily involved in feedback loops. So processes related to growth and development. So again, emphasizing that. Um, okay, so their overview of the two control systems and review of feedback loops and stimulus response, those, those components. Let's do a learning check and then we're gonna go on to compare and contrast these two a little bit more. So I'm not gonna respond to this one here, but it's going to be hidden somewhere else coming up here. So I've got a table I'm gonna fill out and you should be filling it out with me. This is, again is not, you don't have to turn this in as learning check. You can if you want to, um, but when I go over it, it um, these aren't all things you should know already. Some of them are. Chemical message from the nervous system. So this synaptic signaling, right? Is what this is. Oh, I think I actually have that down there. Okay, that'll, that'll come up in a moment. Type of communication is going to be synaptic. This is going to be the bloodstream or hormonal. Um, the chemical message is a hormone. Here it is a neurotransmitter. There are electrical synapses. Won't talk about them much. Here we're assuming we're talking about um, neurotransmitters. Okay, distribution. So the nervous system, it's going to be directed to one specific thing, so targeted. I'll show a picture in a moment. Because it's, talk, we're talking about synapses. The distribution of endocrine system is widespread because the hormones traveling throughout the body in the bloodstream. So it has potential effects everywhere in the body. It has effects in more than one place in the body, widespread effects. How widespread depends on the hormone and where there's receptors for it. Speed, fast. So we will talk about action potentials um, in several weeks. They're fast, they're like electricity. Hormones travel through the bloodstream. That takes longer. So effects are slower. There's some other reasons as well, but that's, that's the main reason. How to increase signal intensity. So if you want to have a larger muscle contraction or a larger um, amount of insulin produced in response to blood sugar, two different things. How do you do that? For this one, we're going to increase neuron firing. So the action potentials that are fired. 
we'll, we'll see that when we get back to nervous system. Here, we wanna increase the amount of hormone. So it's our two different mechanisms um, used to increase signal intensity. That one's probably a little bit less important at this point. Okay, I want to draw one picture for you here with this idea of targeted, targeted versus widespread distribution. Should be pretty clear what I'm drawing here. And I'm gonna draw a neuron in the brain. We're gonna, it's like an eyeball. We're gonna do neuron anatomy, um, right, at some point. Um, but let's just pretend this neuron comes down and like goes here. That is a random spot it's going to. This is not your neural anatomy lecture. That neuron is, let's say, synapsing or talking to, let's say this one is a muscle. It's actually talking not to even a whole muscle, but a group of muscle cells. So this is very targeted. A different neuron is going to have a different target. And in reality, they do have, they, they can branch and there's complicated um, signaling pathways with neurons, but targeted, right? Even if it's more than one target. Endocrine signaling. Let's say we've got a endocrine gland here. Looks just like one, right? Label our neurons. The endocrine gland is going to release hormone into the bloodstream. Well, where did my bloodstream go? How is this for clear? There's a heart that's pumping that. This hormone is going to travel in the entire body, right? Widespread effects. So that is clear, right? 